the Center for Indigenous Theatre's program information session. My name is Mike and I am the office manager at CIT. Just an overview of what we are going to be talking about today, we will be speaking about the history of CIT, the program and the outline of the upcoming school year, as well as our health and safety protocols. We will also run you through the application and ongoing enrollment requirements. Throughout the duration of the info session, Alumni Teresa Cutknife will be showcasing her work she has completed this year. Also, we were able to sit down with CIT's Artistic Director and Principal, Rose C. Stella, and talk to her about her time at the Centre over the years. Tanze Tawio, Kitsune Nitsigasen. Nea Nehio. My name is Kitsune. I am the offspring of a residential school survivor. Many of the students here have similar stories where their parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents went to residential schools, where our culture, our language, and identity was stripped from us. Our practice is forbidden. Today I'm here to give thanks by doing a land acknowledgement and thanking the caretakers that came before us. But instead of doing a specific acknowledgement, I put down some tobacco today for you to have a safe journey and to enjoy the show. If you'd like to know whose land you're currently occupying, check out these two resources here. So whether you're here in Ontario, in Toronto like the students, or nationwide, giving thanks to those who came before us means that we are giving thanks to our ancestors and the many generations who came before us today. Hi. My name's Kayana Garcia, and I'm the Health and Safety and Office Assistant here at CIT. CIT was founded by James Buller and was originally a six-week program called Native Theatre School. The Native Theatre School was then renamed Center for Indigenous Theatre in 1994. We went on to become a full-time program in 1999. We then expanded to a three-year program in 2002 and then added a fourth year in 2018. CIT is a post-secondary program that provides training in acting, voice, and movement. We also offer cultural classes that are focused on dance, song, and oral history. We have partnerships across Canada that are, we are able to utilize throughout the year. Our students are able to participate in land-based teachings with the Bajmajig Storytellers in Manitowaning and Onmatogsi and Nipissing First Nation. Now it's time for our first featured video. Alumni Teresa Cutknife has created a six part series. Here's part four. Hello? Hey. <laughs> no, yeah, I've been good. Um, just been, I've been in Alberta for a few months now. Yeah, yeah, I've just been with my family, um, staying with a friend in Edmonton. Yeah, it's been a really good time. It's been so nice. I've, I felt like I can breathe again, which I know sounds weird and a little dramatic, but I don't know, there's just something so healing about being home. I just feel like myself. Not that I don't feel that way in back in Toronto, but um, I don't know, there's just something about being here where I feel comfortable and I feel like I can just be, be, like period. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's what I've been, I'm really thinking about moving back. It's, I don't know, it's, it's weird just because of, you know, the state that we're in. Um, pandemic and everything but like I don't know it's been something that's been really on my mind for the past little bit I mean of course my family <laughs> really wants me to come back but I'm just not sure yet 
It's something I have to really think about. Thanks, Teresa. That was really great. Now we're going to talk about the outline of the upcoming year. The next cohort of first-year students will start in September. They will begin with an orientation period of exploring CIT and Toronto. Students will then enter full-time training with a winter break in between their studies. Our first years will then continue training from January until May, leading up to graduation. Due to COVID-19, special protocol has been put into place. This includes mandatory social distancing and mask wearing, as well as sanitization and screening before entering CIT studios. The health and safety of our students, faculty, and staff members are of the utmost importance. Here are two versions of what your class schedule might look like this upcoming school year. As you can see, one schedule includes 100% in-person training and the other schedule includes a mixture of 60% online training and 40% in-person training. As our current health and safety regulations continue to develop, your training may be influenced by COVID-19. You have a variety of classes at CIT including dance, voice, physical theater, singing, and story creation. Now it's time for Teresa's next video. Part five, we hope you enjoy. Hello? Hi. Yeah, yeah, I'm going back. I fly late on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, I'm just um, packing right now. Yeah, I don't know. Um, well, I mean, it's been great being home, uh, being with family and friends and just kind of being out on the land. But um, yeah, I have to, I have to come back. <laughs> I have things that uh, I gotta do. I have a new job coming up, so that'll be exciting. Oh my god, that's amazing. I'm so happy for you. Okay, we have to hang out when I get back. How has it been there? Yeah, well, I mean, it's no different here, I guess. People just do what they want. <laughs> No, yeah. Ugh. I mean... I don't know. I just... Of course I'm gonna miss it, and I'm, I'm thinking, I've been thinking about coming back, but... I don't know, that's a bigger conversation and a bigger... thing to for me to sit with and think about. <laughs> I mean, we can get into it when I get back, but um... Yeah, I'll, I'll message you later. I still have to finish packing. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Bye. for our interview with Rose Stella. We were able to sit down with Rose and talk to her about her time at CIT. Um, when did you first hear about CIT? Or um, I guess back then it was Native Theater School. So I, I first heard about the Native Theater School through Mari Mumford. And um, uh, I met Mari at the Native Canadian Center uh, when she was hosting uh, some dance auditions. Uh, 
And I was at the Native Canadian Center um, just participating in uh, several workshops. And um, she asked me if I wanted to um, attend the summer school. And I told her I had already had the, the I already had theater training. Um, and she said, well, if I wanted, if I wanted to go, then I could be an assistant to the director of the program. So I went. So that was 1991. And I was in the program, I think a little over six weeks. Um, because we, we took the show on a tour. Um, so I was there in 1991 at Kimbercote Farm. And, um, and uh, Edna Manitowabi was a student, but also our in resident um, elder. And we had um, uh, lots of students who've gone on to do great things there. Sandra Leron, uh, in, in particular, who has um, Red Sky uh, Theater. Um, so that was when I first heard about it, 1991, and I became a student. Why did you decide to attend theater school and how did it help you develop your career in the arts? I think uh, performing or basically dance was something that I really wanted to do right from the very, uh, from a very young age. Um, I always wanted to dance. So, um, and so I started with dance lessons at quite a young age. And uh, when I was in high school, I continued dance, but then I started, um, I started doing private classes in singing and in acting. Um, I, I was part of the drama club in high school, but I wanted, I wanted to learn more. And um, I decided when I was in, in high school that I wanted to, uh, I had heard that there was a pro that there were there were actually university programs, and so then I um, wanted to continue my training in theater uh, after high school. So I always I always felt I wanted to do it. What's your best piece of advice for someone who is already enrolled into the program or maybe thinking about enrolling into our program? Uh, for people who are thinking of enrolling um, is to just jump in and um, go for it because um, yeah. you can think your way out of it just as easy as you can think your way into it. So just stop thinking and, you know, write that application and um, let us help you or any individual, help that individual um, dive in and, and enter the program. For students who are in the program, um, I just advise them to be patient with themselves and kind to themselves. The work is hard. It, um, theater school is always hard. It's, school is hard, <laughs> but theater school, <laughs> demands a lot from an individual um, and students need to take care of themselves you know mentally physically emotionally when they're in theater school in, in a way that um, other programs don't demand um, and they need to do their own self check-ins all the time uh, because yeah. um, they need to be self-aware and so I, I and to reach out for help when they need it and not be shy uh, about saying that they need assistance. And sometimes, you know, our, our teachers have really great instincts to say, you know, um, some of the problems can be just um, dyslexia, right? And dyslexia yeah. can cause a lot of, um, it can cause a lot of anxiety 
in learning. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes um, if, if it, you know, each teacher can assess uh, if a person needs extra help and they will offer it. And so we have that going on right now uh, with some students. So, you know, uh, learning, learning is, um, for each individual is different. It can be different for each one. And, and I think each individual needs to trust that we're here to help them uh, make it through. We want that, we want that to be clear. Um, obviously, we're, we can only do so much. And sometimes a student needs to step away and take a break. We've had that happen. A student will step away and take a break because their life, their life situation is bigger than, um, you know, it's, it's just too big, but they come back. Yeah. So we've had students take breaks and come back, you know, and, and, and that's great because they've come back fully committed. Thank you, Rose. We appreciate your time and I learned a lot. And now for Teresa's final video and part of her calling series. Hello? Hi. Hey, sorry, it might be loud. I'm I'm just outside. No, yeah, I'm downtown. Yeah, I'm just headed to uh, headed to a thing. Um, no, yeah, sorry, I forgot to call you back. It's just been so busy. Mm -hmm. well, I'm starting a new job. I have a couple different uh, projects on the go. Yeah, it's been a lot, but no, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's good. I, I guess I'm just feeling a little untethered, I guess is the word. <laughs> I finally, um, I mean, I always knew it's, it's the land. I have, I've been missing it so much, but, you know, this isn't forever. Mm -hmm. I'm coming home for Christmas. That's the plan anyway. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear you. Glad to hear you're doing all right. I know, yeah, I just have to I just have to find that connection within myself, even though I'm, even though I'm back in Toronto. Yeah. Oh, hey, I have to hop into a meeting, but good chat with you. Um, hope you're doing well, stay safe, and I won't forget to call you back this time. <laughs> okay, okay, sounds good. Bye. I love you. Thanks, Teresa. You know, I've known Teresa for a few years, and since she was a first-year student at CIT, she has come a long way, and I know everyone here really appreciates her work. Here are the requirements in order to apply to the Center for Indigenous Theatre. You must identify as First Nations, Métis, or Inuit. You must be 18 years of age or older. You need to have a grade 10 English level or higher. 
have an interest in acting, movement, voice, self-discovery, and theater, as well as an interest in exploring Indigenous knowledge. There are important documents that you are required to submit when applying to the Center for Indigenous Theater. They include an updated resume, a 500-word essay expressing your interest in theater and coming to CIT, two references that can vouch for your interest in theater, a photocopy of your health card, and an audition video of you doing some script work. To make things easier, we've created a video on how to do an audition at CIT. Take a look. Hi, I'm Sam Twin. I'm a fourth year student here at Center for Indigenous Theatre. Hi, I'm Teresa Cutknife and I'm also a fourth year student at the Center for Indigenous Theatre. Uh, we'll give you some tips and tricks on uh, how to do your monologues and get them sent into CIT. Yes, so first find an age appropriate monologue for yourself. Uh, use something from the Indigenous canon, uh, something like from Thompson Highway, Drew Hayden Taylor, uh, Kenneth T. Williams, do you have any more? Keith Barker, Alanis King, and if you have any troubles finding anything like that, you could email CIT and we'll provide you with a monologue. So Sam, what did you do for your um, audition into CIT? I did uh, Ivic from Thunderstick by uh, Kenneth Williams. What about you? What did you do? I was sent a collection of different uh, story pieces from Coyote City. What to wear, uh, wear something simple, neutral colors, something that you're comfortable and confident in. Yep, and you know, it does, there's not really a time limit for it, but uh, it should be around three minutes. If you have any other skills that you wanna show, like singing, dancing, hand drumming, anything and everything, feel free to submit it, but you do have to have a monologue. Unless, of course, you're a storyteller and you have a story, uh, then you could submit that instead of the monologue, but no accents, please. And the most important thing is to have fun. And if you stumble, that's okay. Yep. You can do it over and over as many times as you feel. Have any other difficulties like doing your, your monologue or audition? Uh, probably the hardest part was memorizing it all. And uh, I had somebody film it for me. I did not know that it was best to film it with a neutral background, so I filmed it just in a living room and there was a lot of uh, things in the background, but it worked out. And you don't need a professional camera. Uh, we're doing this on an iPhone 10. You can stack it up on some books or put it on a table, whatever you gotta do. As long as it's capturing basically from half of your torso up so we can see your shoulders and your head. You can have a, a relative or somebody hold the camera for you and you can just send that into CIT. Have fun. Some ongoing requirements to remain in the program are that you must be on time and present for all classes, and you must be actively looking for funding while you attend your studies. Tuition costs each year are $3,750. If you are unable to receive band funding, there are organizations you can submit applications to for funding. These include, but are not limited to, Inspire Foundation, Métis Nation of Ontario, Canada Post, Mississaugas of the Credit, and other local organizations. If you are in need of funding assistance, contact us at the Centre for Indigenous Theatre. No student is ever turned away due to lack of funding. Please don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. We would like to thank our funders. With their generous support, we are able to provide a school for our students. We thank the Department of Canadian Heritage, the Ontario Arts Council, the Toronto Arts Council, Misway Beak Aboriginal Employment and Training, BMO Financial Group, Hastings Park Foundation of Rights and Freedoms, and Ontario Arts Foundation. And thank you for attending our program info session. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you soon.